they plan 40 years ahead, and they plan enough trees to make sure that there will always be trees for them to cut down. Yeah. See, I'm not a preservationist, but I'm definitely a conservationist, and you maximize your use of the resources and minimize your negative impacts. Yeah. The problem is Greenpeace seems to want to minimize everything and maximize their own money making. They're just nuts. Yeah. So my thing of the day. Yeah. So Sony has this DRM on their CDs, which puts in the root kits, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, a lot of people know about that. Do, and do we uh, talk about that before? I don't know if we did or not. I don't remember. But anyway, so if you want to put a, you want to play a Sony CD in your Windows computer, it installs these DRMs. It's incredibly difficult to remove. Incredibly powerful. Well, it's it's just a little root kit, and it goes and it makes. If you try to remove it just by deleting files, you end up deleting your CD-ROM driver. Because what it does is it, it it kind of infects your CD-ROM driver, and what it does is it makes it so any file that has a certain prefix in the file name is 100% hidden from the operating system. If, it's star- if the file name starts with dollar sign, S-Y-S dollar sign, it's invisible. Even in safe mode, even to antivirus, to anything, you can't see it. Well, you can see it if you use a rootkit revealer, because what it does yeah. is, is it replaces the code in the operating system for listing the contents of directories. So when you make the operating system call and you say, hey, operating system, what's what files are here? It won't list anything that begins with dollar score SYS dollar sign. Yep. Or you can just boot into a live Dollar CD. sign SYS dollar sign. Damn yeah. it. <laughs> Good game. Anyway, World of Warcraft has spyware. Uh, yeah, it makes sure that I'm not cheating. Make sure that you're not cheating, but it is a spyware. Even though the, uh, currently everyone's pretty sure they're not doing anything evil with it, they are sending your list of processes and such to to. Not Blizzard. just a list of processes, also a list of the title of every window you have open. Yep. And all so kinds of other stuff. If you happen to have Firefox open to like one page. And the name of the page is like child porn? They got a list of whatever websites you're looking at while you're playing World of Warcraft. Yep. Well, the page you're looking at right now. Yeah. But anyway, you know, I don't think they're actually looking at that information. I think they're really just looking for cheating. I figure. They have no vested interest in finding yeah. out. But that's not the point. The point is that they shouldn't be doing that with the spyware or such. Yeah. Here's the trick if you install the Sony DRM. And you rename your cheat files to dollar sign SYS dollar sign. Ooh. World of Warcraft can get you cheating. You know? Fight fire with uh, flamethrower. You know, you know, I got one thing to say to that. Leroy Jenkins. So uh Who would think this is a DRM you would want? Yeah? I wonder how many people are gonna start cheating crazily. At least a few. Yeah. And especially as the internet spreads this, it should be interesting when a bunch of people are running around with like 50 gold and, yeah. 50 gold? That's like nothing. That's a lot in that game. Apparently one gold piece is real valuable in World of Warcraft. What, is like silver the most current common piece or what? No, there's just gold. and you There's use just gold quantity. and it's rare? As far as I can tell, I don't play the game. Oh. Maybe that's why this, uh, those gold miners from China. Because like, apparently if one gold is rare, you could freaking find a way to get a bunch of it. You're freaking damn... And there's, it's easy to get a bunch of it. You get a bunch of uh, minimum wage or low wage workers to sit there and play World of Warcraft. There you go. All right. So, uh, yeah, it's Thursday night, and we miss college. We do. A lot. A whole lot. See, we went to a really geeky school. We went to RIT. And we were surrounded and immersed by uh, surrounded by and immersed in geekery twenty four seven for pretty much four years. It is the geekiest geekiest school there is. In fact, there was that comic recently about how geeky <laughs> RIT was. And it's also like the center of like all piracy in the U- internet piracy. Yeah, it, uh, remember the big piracy group Drink or Die? Yep. They were an international piracy group, and they were busted by the feds a couple of years ago. They were run entirely out of RIT. Yep. RIT is is nerd capital of the world. Yep. I mean, it has the biggest anime club in America. It has the scariest gaming club in the world. <laughs> I've seen scarier gaming clubs, but yeah. It used to have a it has a gaming convention, it has an anime convention at it. Yep. And if you walk through the dorms at 3 a.m., you'll either hear the sounds of people playing uh Counter-Strike or you'll hear the sounds <laughs> of <laughs> <laughs> lonely nerds. Some non-lonely nerds, like frat boys or whatever. Yeah, or, uh, with... or uh, deaf people having sex. <laughs> bump, dump, dump, See, bump, bump. connected to RIT is NTID, the National Technical Institute for the Deaf. And it's a good school, and they're cool people, 
but god damn, they can't hear how much noise they're making. And some of them, you know, because RIT is a is a cross section of nerddom, which is typically more intelligent, and NTID is a cross section of society. The average uh, smartness of NTID is less smart than well, actually, RIT. When I worked for RIT, I always delivered stuff around, and I ended up seeing a study that some professor was doing where apparently most of the crime committed at RIT, I don't know if it was most, but it was definitely the majority, was committed by NTID students to NTID students. To the point that, well, even while we went there, there were security cameras all over the NTID side of campus, but nowhere else. Yeah, it's true. You know what it was is uh, they were the only ones who could think that you know they wouldn't hear them coming. <laughs> <laughs> they just they just sneak in, grab a laptop, run away. You know, one of the big problems at RIT actually because it's mostly geeks who are real smart, at least smart in terms of figuring out how to pull something off. <laughs> RIT had a lot of projectors. Real expensive projectors, like ten, twenty thousand dollar projectors in every classroom, and they were stolen at a rate that you would not believe. Scary rate, and then they replaced them all, but they still they get stolen constantly. So eventually, they well, put... I think there was one guy with like an epidemic of stealing, but I think they eventually. I don't know if they caught him, but I think it eventually stopped. Yeah, I mean, because first of all, they had them mounted to the ceiling, and they had like a cable that connected to it, and if the cable got cut or disconnected, it called security immediately. So what did the nerds do? They left the cable intact and cut all the stuff holding it up. They cut everything except the cable. Then when they were ready to bolt, they cut the cable and ran. Works. Worked real well. I think eventually they got to have security cameras all over the place. They're, they're there. Well, school There's just not down. many of them. Since we left, the school locked down. It locked now, down a little bit. Well, the dorms are locked all the time now, and you can't get in without a key. Yeah, but someone lets you in and stuff, you know. Yeah, but remember when we were there? The doors just open all the time. Yeah. There was a school in Europe, actually, that did something cool, is if you wanted to get into the dorm to with uh, your boyfriend or girlfriend from outside the school at night, then you would have to pay, like, so many pounds, British pounds, uh... which is to, uh, it's basically like, you don't, this isn't your house, if you want to stay here, you got to pay, because, you know, the students who were there got to pay, so if anyone wants to spend the night, they made no, them No, no, that's crap, because say I have an apartment, the, my landlord can It was only the me. dorms. All right, dorms like an apartment. Say I have an apartment, my landlord can't charge me extra five bucks because I had my girlfriend stay over one day. Yeah, night. the thing is, is that you're not technically renting the the dorm. Is that they're letting you stay there? It's like a hotel. Yeah, yeah. But you it's know like what? a hotel if they find out you have an extra person. You know what? That's still crap. But anyway, the point is, is that people paid this happily, and they even like guys are showing off their receipts to be like, "Hey, I stayed in the dorms <laughs> with some chick." Wow. And the school that, that made it, be a problem. The school made a lot of money off of it to do cool stuff. Like, renovate the dorms. Yeah. But, the I mean, the college lifestyle. Oh, yeah. Let's see. We would get up late and skip whatever morning classes we had. Yep. We'd go to class and either sleep or not pay attention or yep. do work for other classes. Yep. And then we'd do crazy stuff all night until real late. Then we'd all go out to, like, a diner and eat. And then we'd stay up later. And then we'd eventually fall asleep and wake up and repeat the next day. Yep. We would go to our anime club, hundreds of people milling around yelling at each other. Yep. We'd go to our uh, board game club, play board games and yell at scary people. I think that's about it. We'd go to hockey. R.I.T. Hockey. Hockey. See, it's such a geeky school, but it had a really good hockey team. It had Well, like a, relative to the hockey teams they played. It had a top-tier Division Two hockey team. Three. No, it was Division Two. Division Two doesn't exist. That's the point. It was a top-tier Division Two hockey team back in the day, because they didn't let me finish here. Mm -hmm. And then they got rid of Division Two in hockey. And instead of putting RIT in Division One where they should have been, they put him in Division Three. Eh, they're in Division One now, but they're only doing their win-lose, 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 you know. About yeah, well, it's their first year in Division One. That's a big leap when you're in Division Three for a long time. <laughs> but in Division Three, they were just unstoppable. They won a game our freshman year, 24 to zero. Against the worst team ever. 24-0 to zero in hockey. Hey, once playing ice hockey on the NES against my cousin, I won 125 to like zero. I can't imagine how that's even possible. I did it. I remember it very clearly. No, because I can't imagine anyone you were playing with putting up with that and continuing to play. Well, you know, he also, there were a lot of games he kicked my ass at, like the stupid championship bowling game. I couldn't, ah. I couldn't beat him at all. He would get like a 300, I'd get like 60. But I miss that. I mean, in college, I'd pay a dollar, 
and I could see an awesome hockey game and then hang out all night. Well, it was $3, I think. 